Thanks a lot for joining. And uh, this presentation, uh, I'm sure some of you have seen it. It's been going around quite a few with you, with the sales guys and with the dealers. And um, basically, this is a basic uh, presentation on dairy farm language. And uh, Amir and I discussed about this presentation quite a lot, and we decided a few years ago that we think that uh, it's important that I know we're all selling Afi, Afi milk and Afi farm and talking about fertility and uh, health and uh, different uh, capabilities of our software, but uh, sometimes uh, we have uh, sales guys or dealers or people who go out on farms and they're more familiar on the technical side or less, I'll put it this way, less familiar with the dairy farm language. So we uh, decided to uh, build, design a dairy farm language uh, presentation that I think can help you understanding a bit more what the farmer's uh, language is, what he talks about when you go on to farm, give you more comfortable or uh, more idea on what uh, the farmer's life is and what the language. And uh, although these words are in English, but they are relevant for every language. And, uh, and we're trying to keep it simple, very simple language. We're not getting into too professional uh, understanding a language that goes on farm, just basic and simple language. So uh, to start off, just to bring you in to a farmer's life, a dairy's cow's life, and this is without the smell, okay? So you won't smell the, what's going on in the farm. Here you can just see, and uh, this is just to show you in general how when a cow is born, what her life cycle is, what she goes through until she uh, becomes a milk cow. And uh, we'll go into this slowly, explaining each uh, stage a bit. And uh, of course, like Amir said, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free just to write them on a the chat and Amir and I will uh, be glad to answer you. So of course we start off when the calf is born, the female calf is born. And for her first eight weeks, she's, what, uh, she's receiving, usually in most farms, she's being milk fed. Again, this is something that will be different. The routine, the time, the uh, period will be different for uh, each farmer on each farm. But in general, when we're talking about generally eight weeks, the calf will receive feed. Of course, most of the farms, the first three days to one week will be colostrum. That will be the milk from the mother that has a lot of uh, additional benefits not only the milk, but also the uh, components that are inside the milk. That's for the first week. And usually for eight weeks, she continues to receive, the calf receives uh, milk in the bottle based on her, her, uh, her age, based on her uh, weight. And this is the amount of milk that she's being fed for eight weeks. And um, just to give you a, uh, some information that we, uh, we like to share that's not really connected to AFI, but it's more connected to uh, ideas that we give farmers when we go on farm. One of the ideas that we share with the farmer is that we recommend weighing the calf when it's born. Usually if it's a Holstein a calf, she will weigh between 45 to 50 kilograms. And what we expect after these eight weeks of milk feeding she would at least double her weight. Now, why are, we saying in the, why are we saying that? Because it's very important that during her eight weeks of milk feed, she doubles her weight. And if a calf will double, double her weight, this will give her a very uh, good beginning towards her rest of her uh, life or her life cycle. So uh, we recommend farmers to weigh them in the beginning and weigh them when they finished milk uh, giving the milk weaning and uh, if a calf hasn't doubled her weight it could be because she was twins because she was born small we recommend to continue feeding the calf at least until she's doubled her weight 
So after those eight weeks, we move on to what we call group housing. This will go on for around about 12 months where we will monitor the calves, mainly their health, their weight, just to see how they're doing. There are periods that sometimes they can have a few disease like pneumonia or salmonella or other diseases because they're together in a group. And here in general, Afi milk doesn't really come in contact with this stage in the life of the calf. After, when she's around about 12 months, 11, 12 months, she becomes a, a, a calf that starts showing heat signs. And here we start introducing the uh, us. This is where Afi Farm and Afi Milk, the company, we come into contact with the farm. So around about 12 to 13 months, this is when we start heat detection on the farm. And as you can see on, the, on this picture, these are two calves in heat. One is jumping on the other. And the calf under who's standing, this is a calf that's in heat. Um, usually between 13 to 15 months, some farmers will make it a bit earlier, some farmers will make it a bit later. We uh, inseminate the uh, heifer. These are called heifers already. This is when we inseminate them, around about 13 to uh, 15 months. And when she is uh, inseminated and she's pregnant, this will go on for nine months. And usually what we expect is to, in around two years time from the day she was born, plus minus two years, 25 months, sometimes even 23 months, we expect the, uh, the calf that was born two, month, two years ago to calve and to start uh, entering into the milk parlor. Um, before we get into that, I just want to tell you and remind you that in the beginning of her two years, the calf is costing the farmer money. And it's not a small amount of money. The cost of feeding her, of milk feeding her, of the group feeding, veterinarian, working, labor, the cost of the calf itself, all this is quite expensive. And uh, I must say that uh, we go to some cases where we see that this group of uh, heifers are usually could be neglected. Sometimes the farmers will give them leftover milk, antibiotic milk, leftover feed, and not treat them with the highest uh, quality, I would say, of uh, feed. And uh, we recommend, of course, to give them the highest quality of milk, the highest quality of feed, because it's important to understand and remember that this is our second generation. And these heifers in the future are going to be milk producing cows. And if we start off and we give them a good start and they grow up well and they grow up healthy, the return on investment will be in the milk production. And there are many, uh, I would say, researchers that correlate between the growth and the health of the heifer through those first two years and with the milk production and the longevity or how long she will stay in the farm. Okay, so after two, after two years, the calf, the heifer calves, and here she starts her first uh, visit or her first, uh, uh, first time that she enters into the milk parlor, and here she starts producing milk. Um, we won't get into a lot of explanation about the uh, uh, milk production and how it starts and different, uh, I would say, health problems that we need to be aware of. Remember, we're trying to keep this basic and we're trying to, to point it around fertility. So for the first, I would say, around about 40, 50 days, she's producing milk. The heifer, the first lactation cow, is getting familiar with the milk parlor. She starts producing milk. And usually around about 40 to 70 dim, which is days in milk, which we'll explain a bit about it later on, this is when we inseminate her again. We'll inseminate the cow usually between 50, 70 uh, days in milk after she had calved. And if the insemination was an effective insemination or when this insemination was effective, and we'll talk about this, she is checked for 
pregnancy. Usually it will be between 30 to 50 days after insemination. And if the cow is pregnant, she will now start her pregnancy time, her pregnant uh, period in, the, uh, in her cycle. And round about two months, when she's about 200 or 220 pregnant days, two months before she is expected to calve, this is when we'll dry the cow off will dry her off, will let her prepare towards the, uh, in her next calving, and she'll go into a group, the dry group, the dry group where she will stay for generally around 60 days. Sometimes it can be a bit more, sometimes it can be a bit less, but in general, we expect them to stay for uh, 60 days in this uh, dry group where she's resting and preparing herself for the second lactation. Okay, so again, it goes through the same uh, procedure after she calves, and this is the, in general, this is her cycle. What's important to remember, and it's important to, I think, uh, that you should understand that all the time the cow was what we call in her first lactation, this is her ROI or her return on investment of the first two years of her life. So this is why it's very important to make sure that these first lactation cows are healthy and produce milk, and again, they will uh, calve and start a second lactation, because if we have a cow that leaves the farm, what we call is culled, or leaves the farm during the first lactation, this is a great loss to the farmer. The farmer will start uh, uh, making profit, okay? Making profit on the investment. She'll, he'll start making profit only from second lactation and uh, more. So that's why it's important to make sure that the first lactation cows are healthy and we treat them. And so they come in healthy and they produce milk also for second, third, and more lactations. Of course, the more lactations we get out of the cow, the more profit the farmer will uh, receive. Uh, here, uh, we just now uh, added on a fertility dictionary that is giving you the main uh, terminologies or the main uh, words, I would say, or expressions that we use on a dairy farm. This is the main fertility dairy farm language. And we will talk about them and we'll go in through them and explain where, why they are important and where, we, uh, and where they are in the cow's uh, life cycle. The first word is uh, what, we meet, what we call is calving interval. And this is the calving interval is the period that we uh, check and we uh, count from one calving until the next calving. Okay, so from when she calved until the next time the cow will calve, those days that have gone between one calving and the other calving, this is what we call calving interval. Inside the calving interval, we have the lactation or the milk producing period. This is what we call, and this is very known in, in uh, farm language, days, days in milk or dim. You'll see it a lot also in, uh, in Afi Farm, and I'll show to you an example as we go along, but dim or days in milk, it's the same as lactation. It's another uh, period that it's very important to monitor and to uh, check. We go a level down, it's called, this is another word that we call open days. Open days is the period from when the cow is calved until she is pregnant. And just to bring you into a bit more, and uh, if you joined us last week, we talked a bit about the open days and the cost of an open days and the importance of the open days. And the longer the days, the open days are, the more money the cow is costing the farmer. And we'll talk about this and we'll show an example as we go on through this presentation. In Underneath the open days, it's divided up into, I will say, three uh, categories. The first category is what we call voluntary waiting period. This is the period 
that the farmer and each farmer decides how long after calving he wants to keep, let his cows rest before he starts inseminating. It can go from 40, 50, 60, even some farms are up to 90 days of voluntary waiting period. And this can also be defined in uh, the software in AFIFARM. So each farmer can enter its own uh, voluntary waiting period. And based on this voluntary waiting period, that's when the farmer will decide to inseminate the cow. But the, le the next level under voluntary waiting period is what we call the rest days. So the farmer has decided that his voluntary waiting period will be a certain amount of days, but this cow won't, will go past the voluntary waiting period. For example, if the voluntary waiting period was for 40 days, but the cow only uh, showed heat signs after 60 days. So for that cow, her voluntary, her rest days, sorry, will be 60 days. And I will show you an example soon on the screen, on a graph, how we can see it. The third uh, level under the open days is what we call the waste days. This is a period between the first insemination until pregnancy. Why is this important? Because if the cow was inseminated once and she became pregnant, then of course there is no waste days. But the more inseminations the cow has, the more waste days, the more waste days reflects on to the open days. So if a cow has many waste days, of course it will have an effect on the open days and on the profitability or the profit of the farm. And we'll soon show an example and uh, how we'll put it all in a graph. So it'll be very logic and you'll understand uh, clearly what these, uh, why these uh, terminologies or why these expressions are important to uh, understand and know. And after the cow is pregnant, this is a pregnant period. And we, after, like I explained to you before, around about six months, 200, 220 days pregnant, the cow will be dried off. Each farmer decides when, which day to dry them off, what the date. Some will do it once a week. One some will do it at a certain days of pregnancy. Some cows will be dried off early. Some will be dried off later. But the dry off is a decision. The farmer decides when to dry the cows. And of course, once the cow is dried off, she enters into the dry period. And the dry period is the period from the day or the day she was dried until calving. And the length of the dry period, if it's short dry days of under 50, 40 days or long dry period of more than 70 days have an impact, can have an impact on the next lactation. So that's why it's important to monitor also the dry period and the dry days in the dry period. So to take all these words or this dictionary that we now uh, explained a bit and we uh, talked about, let's put this all on a graph where you can see how everything is connected into the dairy cow's uh, life. So like we started off with here on the bottom, you can see the calving interval and remember like we explained from one calving to the next calving this is calving interval okay so from one calving to the next calving which is what we call a calving interval inside the calving interval we're divided up into the lactation or remember we call it also the days in milk so on top the period or the time the cows are producing milk throughout this period is called lactation. This is the lactation. These are her days in milk. Inside the lactation, we have two, uh, two, two meanings or two periods in the, throughout the lactation. One is called the open days and one is called the pregnancy. <clears throat> Remember, we talked a bit about the open days. 
and it's important to have short open days, or let's say, I'll put it this way, not to have too long open days, because if we have a farm that the open days are long, it means that it takes them a long time. The cow is open, which means she hasn't got, she's not pregnant, so she's open, and the longer the open days, the less profitable the cow is. Go down to the third level. The third level inside the open days is what we have two meanings. One is called the rest days, and one is called the waste days. Inside the rest days, or, or if we can put it in another word, this is when the cow is recovering or resting, <clears throat> excuse me, from her calving. Here we have in the side, the rest days, the farmer will decide the VWP is what we call the voluntary waiting period. So the farmer has decided this is the period or this is the time he's waiting now for the cow to recover after calving. Some farmers it will be longer, some farmers it will be shorter, but these are the cows. This is the period that the farmer has decided to wait after calving. And from here, from the day after the voluntary waiting period, this is the time the farmer would want to inseminate the cow. And like I explained to you beforehand, it could be that the cow will show heat signs or be inseminated straight after the voluntary waiting period. But there are many cases that the cow will show her heat signs after the voluntary waiting period. So when she is first inseminated, this is when we decide how long her rest days were. Now, if the cow was inseminated for the first time and she became pregnant after her first insemination, then the cow won't have any waste days, of course, because she was inseminated after the first insemination and she became pregnant, so we don't have waste days. But to, uh, to be honest and to tell you that most of the, in, in many of the cases, and we're talking about between 30, 40, 50 percent of the cows, depending on the lactation on the farm, 30 to 40 to 50 percent of the cows won't be pregnant after the first insemination. So cows that aren't pregnant after the first insemination will start counting west days and these waste days are counted until the effective insemination. And it can be one insemination, two inseminations, or more, but once the cow is pregnant after her first insemination, and this is what we call the effective insemination, that is when we count the waste days. So after the cow is pregnant, here she enters her pregnancy period, okay? She starts her pregnancy from the effective insemination until calving. Like we explained in the previous uh, uh, slide, 60 days or around about 50 to 60 days before she uh, calves, this is when the farmer will decide the date or the day to dry the cow off. And once she's dried off, she enters her dry period. Now at this point, when the cow is dried off, she finishes her days in milk. The days in milk are counted from calving until dry off. <clears throat> it's important to, uh, to know and it's important to remember when we're talking about a cow's lactation or a cow's days in milk, it's from calving until dry off or there are cases it's from calving until the cow leaves the farm. There are cases that the cow didn't become pregnant for different reasons, so she can have a very long lactation, for example, even up to 600, 700 days, 800 and more, but the minute the cow is dried off or she leaves the farm, that is when her lactation finishes. Okay, so this is just putting in a graph, 
the uh, dictionary or the explanation that we explained in the previous uh, slide. And now I want to take us to the next level and to show you how we put all of this into AFIFARM or what we call into a lactation graph in AFIFARM. So I'm sure most of you are familiar or should be familiar. And uh, if you're not familiar, then I'll explain a bit now. This is a typical lactation graph in AFIFARM for every cow that has calved in the farm and starts producing milk, she has her personal, her individual lactation graph. In the lactation graph, we have on the left side, we have her milk, the amount of milk, and on the bottom where it's written days, these are dim. Remember, dim is the days in milk, and this is her lactation. So, on the graph, we have three colors. The blue is her milk. You can see here in the legend, okay? The red is conductivity, which we won't be talking about now, but I'm sure most of you, or if not all of you, know what conductivity is. And the green line, the green line in the graph is the activity. And using the activity, using the information from the pedometer, this is where we will monitor the cow and see when she's in heat, and give the farmer this information so he can decide when to inseminate the cow or and how many days to inseminate her. So to add on what we saw in the previous graph into AFIFARM, so you'll see the whole picture in the graph or in our graph in AFIFARM. Remember, this is the calving. Okay, this is when the cow calved. So this is day zero. Day zero is the day the cow has calved. And here the farmer has decided after 40 days, this is her voluntary waiting period. Okay, the farmer decided in this farm that the voluntary waiting period or the rest time that he's giving the cows after calving is around about 40 days. Okay, but this cow, for example, when was she inseminated? She was inseminated after 60, 70 days in milk. Okay, so we had the voluntary waiting period, which was 40 days. But in this case, on this cow, this cow was inseminated um, after 70 days in milk. So if we want to look at this cow's rest days. Okay, so the rest days the cow had between calving and first insemination was 70 days. All right, so this is what we explained in the previous uh, slide. So the farmer decided that the cows, this is his voluntary waiting period of 40 days, but this cow was inseminated only after 70 days in milk. So her rest days were all together was 70 days. But like we explained uh, beforehand, not all cows, sadly, I know everyone will want after the first insemination, the cows will become pregnant. But generally, in most of the farms, like I said to you, it could be 30, 40, 50 percent of the cows will be pregnant after first insemination. And in this case, we can see that the cow was inseminated here for the first time. Then after 20 days, she was inseminated for the second time, 20 days inseminated for the third time, and here, round about 140 days in milk, this cow was inseminated for the fourth time. And the period that was between the first insemination to the first insemination, these are the waste days. Okay, so it took this cow four inseminations all together. So the open days, the open days of this cow is how much? 140 days. Okay, so even though the voluntary waiting period was 40 days and the farmer started inseminating her at 70 days 
if she would have become pregnant, then her open days would be 70. But because this cow wasn't, uh, was inseminated four times, only on the fourth insemination she became, she became pregnant, that's why altogether her open days will be round about 140 days in milk. Okay. <clears throat> After, of course, she's her fourth insemination, these are her pregnancy days. And this is at towards the end. This is where she was dried off. So all together, this is cow lactation is from calving until dry off. Now, just to, generally, just to explain, in Afifam, we have information on the yield and different information on how much milk this cow produced throughout her lactation. But what's important to see that this cow, it took her over um, close to 350 days in milk to become uh, until she was dried off. Um, to, to try and explain, uh, and I'll try and explain the importance of improving the calving interval or shortening the calving interval. This is a graph that we've had, uh, we've presented quite a few times in AFI. And try, I'm trying to explain to you the importance of uh, improving calving interval. So this is an example of a cow with a first lactation. Okay, and here we can see her milk. This cow as a first lactation cow was producing high milk at the beginning of her lactation, and her lactation or calving interval went on for 600 days, which we can understand based on our previous uh, cow that it took her long time to become pregnant. And in all together, she had a very long lactation and a long calving interval. But if we take it for an example, and we shorten her calving interval. If she was inseminated on time, and if she was detected on time, and if the insemination was uh, first or second insemination, we could have shortened her calving interval to 400 days, okay? And if we would have shortened the calving interval to 400 days, this cow would have been dried off and she would start producing milk already for the second lactation. And the difference in this milk is a lot and lot of liters. So just to show you an example, the period between 400 and 600, sorry, go back to show you. This is the milk she produced between 400 and 600 days. So this milk was all together was round about 1,900 kilograms of milk. But if this cow would have had a shorter calving interval, a shorter days in milk, okay, and she would become pregnant, and she would be become pre pregnant earlier after first or second insemination, this cow would have had shorter a uh, calving interval, and her next lactation, she would produce the same 200 days she would have produced four, over 4,000 kilograms. So we can straight away see that there is a big difference between a long calving interval where this cow produced close to 2,000 kilograms, 1,900, and if she would have had a shorter calving interval and calved again after 400 days, she would have produced in those same 200 days an additional 2,000, more than 2,000 kilograms of milk. So just for, to understand the important and why it's one, this is one of the reasons, this isn't the only reason, of course, but this is one of the reasons why we should shorten the calving interval, try and leave it round about to 400 days in milk, because that extra days, 200 days of a longer cow calving interval, the farmer can profit by having extra milk of close to 2,000 kilograms of milk. You put that in money, you put in that how much it costs, how much it costs to feed her for those 200 days on a milk cow ration, 
you already see that it's a heavy cost for the farmer that he can save and get a return on an investment of shortening the calving days. To show you an example, and this is an example from a farm in Israel of a cow that had many lactations, okay? So this is a graph, this is a very uh, known graph in Afi Farm, where we take the cow's lactation graph and we show all her lactations on one graph. And in this case, this cow here, cow number 666, had eight lactations on the farm. And if I remember correctly, I think she's still on the farm in, uh, in Israel. And this is just to show you in each lactation how much the cow produced, okay? How much the cow produced for each lactation. And altogether, this cow has produced for the farmer over 100,000 kilograms or liters of milk in eight lactations. So by shortening the calving interval and a healthy cow and uh, producing a high milk, this cow stays in the farm for more than eight lactations. Okay, now, um, when we were explaining and we were talking about the fertility dictionary, I want to connect it now to what we've been talking about and what we talked about last week to the cow monitoring or why it's important to have a uh, cow monitoring system or Afi, uh, Afi farm cow monitoring on the farm. And here is an example. This is a uh, research that was done quite a few uh, years ago, dividing the day up into four uh, periods. And they looked at 2,661 cows for over 24, for more than 24 hours to see how the cows are divided up into heat detection throughout those 24 hours. Before a cow monitoring was introduced to the world, there was a concept, I would say, a, an understanding or knowledge-wise, I can say, that farmers assumed that majority of the cows, most of the cows will show heat signs during the day, and during the night, the cows will rest and uh, sleep. On this, uh, <clears throat> this uh, trial that was done, we can straight away see that the cows, throughout 24 hours, we can say nearly it's evenly split between the morning, noon time, afternoon and night time, heat detection on a, excuse me, on a farm that has a routine of heat detection throughout the, uh, the day, cows will, heat, will show heat signs, not only during the day, but even I would say, there's even more cows that will show during the night. So here comes in the importance of having a cow monitoring, a Afi, Afi farm cow monitoring uh, software, because farmers will might be able to detect the cows during the day, but during the night, it can even go up to more than 50% of the cows that the farmer has gone back home. He hasn't seen these cows in heat, where, where we have the, uh, the collar or the pedometer on the cow that is monitoring this cow throughout 24 hours. So those cows that are in heat during the night, the farmer will be able to receive this information and see these cows that are in heat. So from heat detection of visual heat detection, I would say of around about 50% 50, 50 of the cows, here now he's getting heat detection of 90, close to 90% of the cows that are being detected by Afi Farm, by our cow monitoring uh, software with the neck collar or with the pedometer, giving him coverage of 24 hours. Now, I know we spoke about it last uh, week and uh, I spoke a bit about it in my presentation and Maria spoke about it in her presentation. But again, just to go over it and to put this into a presentation when we're talking about fertility, with the, anim the animals for insemination report in Afi Farm, with the neck collar or the pedometer, this is the information 
that we will give to the farmer. And why do I want to show this report? Because this I took this morning from a farm in, uh, in Denmark. And just to show you that this cow, okay, was detected at six o'clock in the evening, okay? And this could be after the farmer had left. And we are showing the farmer and giving the farmer the information of her heat detection at six o'clock in the evening and showing the farmer, like we explained last uh, week, the best time or the fertility window, the highest possibility of the cow to become pregnant based on the fertility window. Just to go a step back, I just uh, want to remember, just to show you that here we have the information that we were talking about, okay, in our previous uh, slides. For example, what is her number of lactation? How many inseminations? Here we have in some information on her DIM. Remember, we talked about DIM, days in milk. How many days in milk? Because this is very important for the farmer to understand and to know how long this cow has been throughout the lactation. And information on her previous heat, if she had one or a previous insemination, and information on this current heat uh, detection. So this is an example of a cow that was detected at six o'clock in the evening and giving the farmer that up until 10 o'clock in the evening, this morning, sorry, this will be the best time to inseminate the cow. The second option is what we call moderate consumption rate. Okay, so again, this cow was detected at two o'clock in the morning, all right? And now we're around eight o'clock in the morning on this farm. So this cow, if we leave this cow for a few more hours and we don't inseminate her, this will be her high consumption rate, or I would say this would give her the highest possibility of becoming pregnant. And now the cow is in the moderate part or the moderate period of her heat. And once she reach, reaches the high consumption rate or the, light, the darker purple bullseye, it will change here on top to high consumption rate. The fertility window will always stay the same. This is giving the farmer the accurate, the exact time for high consumption rate. When is the best time to inseminate her? And here, this will change based on the cow's position throughout the day. So this cow, this is the previous slide. She was on a high consumption rate. This cow is in a moderate, and as she goes forward, she will reach high consumption rate, and it will change on the animals for insemination report. And this is the low consumption rate. Here, this is early before, okay, very early after she was detected in heat, and this is what we call low consumption rate. So we can see now, this cow here is on the low consumption rate. Not, she hasn't even reached the purple period in the bullseye, but we can see that her fertility window, or I would say her high consumption rate, will be between 11 in the morning till 7 in the evening. And here we can see exactly when her high consumption rate or the best time will be to inseminate the cow. Okay, so this is just to give you, to put it on a presentation that you see the three options that we have on the animals for insemination report, high, moderate or medium, and low consumption rate. So we talked about animals for insemination. Also in Afi Farm, we're also, of course, we're detecting animals for insemination, but there are two other, uh, I would say, status of cows on the farm that we need to monitor and give the farmer attention and he, she should be able to uh, pay attention to them. The first uh, status that we talk about is the pregnant cows. Okay, every farm, of course, we want the cows to become pregnant, 
but in every farm there will be a percentage, hopefully it's a small percentage of cows, that will have an abortion. And the importance of detecting these cows, especially if it's early after her insemination, or it's early in the pregnancy period, so the farmer might be able to decide to inseminate her again. That's why if the farmer has the pedometers on the cow and leaves the pedometers on the cow or the neck collar after the cow has been uh, inseminated, it's important to monitor also through the pregnancy period for cows that are suspected for abortion. And in Afi Farm, we have a report called Suspected to Up for Abortion. So if a cow, a pregnant cow, had showed heat signs, okay, because she had an abortion, it will straight away come up onto the suspected abortion report. And Maria explained to you last week that it can be even added on to the animals for insemination report. And here is just to show you a graph and we've already explained, so when you see a graph, you understand straight away that this cow was inseminated five times before she came pregnant, and then she was pregnant because we don't see any activity, but what happened just before she was meant to be dried off, we can see here where the arrow is, she showed excessive activity or I would say high activity so the farmer should straight away go and check her and see that if she had an abortion he will decide maybe not to inseminate her but of course not to dry her off and sadly if she stops producing milk or her milk production goes down she will leave the farm it's important to also monitor the pregnant cows because the farmer doesn't want to dry a cow off that isn't pregnant and wait another 60 days. And then he won't understand why the cow hasn't calved. All of this could have happened because she aborted. She had an abortion during her previous lactation. And if you have a uh, pedometer neck collar an Afi collar, an Afi Act 2 pedometer on the cow, while during the pregnancy period, you'll be able to detect these abortions and the farmer will be decide what to do with the cow. The second uh, status that's important to monitor, okay? And we've been talking about cows that are in heat, cows that are showing heat. But on every farm, there are cows that have what we call silent heats or they don't show heat signs because of different uh, reasons. It could be because she is at lameness, because she's a high producing cow, and in many cases, a high, very high producing cow won't show heat signs. So these cows need to be uh, showed on a report, and we call these cows anestrous cows. That means they haven't shown a heat sign they have passed their voluntary waiting period or the period the farmer has decided that he wants his cows to wait after calving. And if she hasn't shown any heat signs, bring her to this report called the, to, called the Anestrus report. And we will bring the farmer, show him this report so he can check all the cows on the list. And not only cows, of course, also heifers. So heifers, remember we talked about it, that heifers usually the farmer will inseminate around about 13 months, but if a heifer's already 15, 16 months, and she hasn't shown any heat, this will be, it won't be very, it will be quite rare, but there are heifers, a small percentage that won't show heat signs, will also bring them onto this report. So cows that don't show heat signs, or a cow that had an abortion and didn't show a heat sign, or cows that passed the voluntary waiting period and hasn't shown a heat sign, making sure that no animal on the farm is forgotten. This is an important list for the farmer to check, I would even say on a daily routine basis, to see these cows and decide maybe to give them some treatment, some uh, synchronization treatment to uh, make them uh, to make them uh, to make them to become in heat, and just to show you an example 
of a cow and an estrus cow on a farm, we can see that this cow here, milk production is very, very high, even reaches in some periods over 70 kilograms of milk. So in many cases, these kind of cows with high producing milk won't show any heat signs. It will be quite flat, the activity uh, information from the pedometer. So the farmer will be able to see these cows straight away, give them treatment and know that this cow or decide to leave this cow until she uh, later on throughout the lactation. But at least he's aware and he knows that this cow had a, uh, isn't showing any heat sign and I can go and uh, treat her. Um, these are a few uh, values, I would say, and benchmarks that uh, we have put together just to give you an idea on different uh, fertility, I would say, uh, benchmarks that we use in our software. Many of them we have reports that we can compare and show the farmer fertility reports. We call it the general fertility report, showing the farmer how his fertility is on the farm. And just to go through some of these benchmarks with you, of course, we talked about, remember, calving interval. So the optimum value, uh, we'll say around about 390 to 430 days. Again, depending on the farm routine, because there are farms that have what we call seasonal calving or split calving, where the calving intervals will be different. On a year-round farm that has cows calving throughout the year, you would want to see around about 390 to 430 days of a calving interval. I can say that in many years ago, it was more uh, optimum to have less calving days, but now cows are producing more milk, and because they're producing more milk, sometimes they'll have longer calving interval, but if in average, and please remember that these numbers that we're talking about here are an average of the farm, so if a farmer's average values are higher than 430, 440 days, then probably there is a problem on this farm. The second one is days in milk for first heat sign. So we would expect that a cow should show her first heat sign 40 days or lower, or even say 40 to 50 days. But if it's more than 70 days in average, that more than 17 days, most of the cows are showing heat signs, this could be a reason to aware the farmer that there might be some kind of fertility problem on the farm. We expect also that, okay, that more than cows, more than 90% of the cows should have a heat in 60 days. If they have less than that, then again, it could indicate that there is a situation on the farm. And we can go through them, average days open. What are the average days open? And remember, oh, this is on a, a yearly routine farm that has calving throughout the year. We expect it to be between 40, 70, 80, even sometimes up to 80 days in milk. If it's average, is higher than 85, 90, and remember the average is higher, then again, this is something the farmer needs to be aware of. When we're talking about number of inseminations per pregnancy, okay, we expect, okay, that there shouldn't be more than two inseminations per pregnancy. If there are more than two and a half inseminations, three inseminations per pregnancy, again, in average, we need to, and we can show this on our uh, fertility report, and the farmer can check and see why he has more inseminations uh, than we expect. Consumption rate, when we're looking at consumption rate, or we're looking at the percentage of heifers that should be pregnant after the first insemination, I would say that it should be in the area of 70 60, 70%, even some cases it will be higher because heifers are usually 
very fertile and usually we will see that their consumption rate their uh, consumption rate will be after the first insemination should be around about 70%, 60 to 70%, even higher. If it's under 58, 55%, the farmer needs to check. And this could be related, like we said in the first uh, slide, this can be related to how the heifers are growing. And if the heifers are receiving low quality of milk, low quality of feed, aren't being monitored, this can have an impact on the consumption rate of the heifers. Consumption rate in cows, again, depends which lactation, but in general, we're looking at between 35, 38 to 60 percent should be the optimum value. But if the first insemination consumption rate is lower than 55 percent throughout the, all the lactations, again, we need to be aware, and we can see this in our fertility general report. Three inseminations, okay, we don't expect and we shouldn't have more than, uh, there shouldn't be 90% of the cows, more than 90% of the cows should become pregnant, conceive, with less than three inseminations. If there are less than 90%, then we should aware the farmer. Normal cycles. We didn't exactly talk about cycles, but in Afifam, we have a uh, report that divides the cycles into three or four periods. One is called short cycles, one is called normal cycles, one is called medium, and one is called double or long cycles. A normal cycle of a cow, once she's in heat, until she will sow her next heat, a normal cycle is between 18 and 24 days. And we expect that the majority of the cows, 68, even 70% of them, to, should be showing normal cycles. If it's less than that, there's something problematic on the farm, and the farmer needs to be aware. Average days open, we talked about it, 70 to 120 days. and a, another parameter that we use a lot that we call difficult cows or cows with long uh, open days, we call this, this is a benchmark that we put the cows in 150 days or more. We don't expect to have more than 10% uh, of the cows with 150 days in milk and still open. If we have more than 15% of the cows, that are 150 days in milk and still aren't pregnant, then this should be alerted to the farmer. And again, he can see it on the report, on the fertility report. The last few benchmarks, we talked about the period of the dry, the dry period. Again, the optimum is between 53 and 64 to 70, but if it's too short, or if the period is too long in average, it's something we need to aware the farmer. Abortion rate, this is when we spoke about the abortion report that we have in Afi Farm. So we expect the cow to only have around about 5% or less abortion rate on a farm. If it's more than 10%, again, it could be connected to health. There are a abortion related health problems that can be on the farm and the farmer will need to check take blood samples for example and check why these cows are having an abortion average age of the heifer okay when we're talking about the the calves the heifer for first calving remember we spoke about it that it should be in a period of two years if it's shorter or too long again the farmer needs to check why his cows are calving only after 30 or more months. Culling cows or cows that are leaving the farm because they weren't uh, pregnant or because of what we call reproductive problems, their fertility problems should be less than 10%. If there are more than 10% of the cows leaving the farm, remember we talked about it, that they have a long lactation or a long calving interval and they're leaving the farm and the only reason is because they didn't become pregnant, 
This is something the farmer needs to be aware of and check because it can be related, of course, to a fertility problem, but it could be also related to a health problem or even as a cow is a fresh cow or even going back to the previous lactation. But it's important that, that we should have less percent of cows, less than 10% of cows leaving the farm because they had a fertility problem. Average days in milk on a farm, and like it's written here in the uh, brackets, depending on the country or on the farm routine or on the farm management, if it's split calving or uh, if the farm is a full year round calving, but in average, when we're talking about a routine farm that has calving throughout the year, then the average should be 160, 170. That would be the optimum. If it's more than that, okay, the days in milk are longer, which means that the calving interval is longer, which means we'll go back to the open days are longer. This is why it would be important the farmer to see if there are an average of more than 100 days in uh, milk. And the last one is what we call the culling rate. Okay, so we want to see that the replacement, okay, the cull rate is less than 30%. All right, but if there is a cull rate of more than 35%, 40%, 50%, meaning there are a lot of cows that are leaving the farm, even we can say in the first lactation, okay, and these cows are leaving in the first lactation. And remember, what we explained in the beginning, that cows that leave in the first lactation are cows that the farmer is losing money. So the cull rate should be less than 30%. And if the cull rate is less than 30%, then this farm knows that most of these cows have more lactations. And like we saw, even a cow with eight lactations, and the farmer will have higher uh, profit. So, this is in general this presentation, the presentation uh, on dairy farm language. I hope it gave you a bit of an idea and uh, will assist you in understanding a bit more on a dairy farm's life. So when we go onto farm, we'll be able to feel more comfortable. And uh, Amir will share with you, of course, this presentation uh, with all of you. But I think, you know, just to go over it and have it together with you, when you go on farm or before you go on farm and you want to talk about cow monitoring and you want to talk about AFI collar, AFI Act 2, and you want to talk about fertility, this uh, presentation is trying to keep and uh, give you a simple and general idea on a uh, farmer's language, cow's life, and a bit more understanding when you get onto farm. So thank you very much.